Hello and welcome to Dr. Rick here, and today I'd like to talk to you a bit about vitamin B1, otherwise known as thiamine. Okay, so we're up here, B1, thiamine. Now, you're probably thinking, well what are the similarities of this B1 thiamine to our vitamin A that we, st that we studied earlier? Um, and one of the main similarities is one of the sources that you get it from, you actually, you actually get it from pork as well, so you get it from pork rice, wheat germ. Now if you're thinking what, what is a germ? Well a germ is when something germinates, it's like the first bit of the plant to actually grow. Um, obviously wheat is a, is a common crop, we use it to make bread and cereals and stuff like that. Um, okay so, so these are primarily the, the sort of main sources where we get it from. Uh, you don't need to worry too much about getting this vitamin because you only need it in very very small doses. I mean, a man needs about 1.2 micrograms. I don't know if you're familiar with like, the gram system and how, or, or whether you're more familiar with like, pounds and ounces, but, but micrograms, I can assure you, are very tiny either way. And you will, you're very likely to get it unless you're an alcoholic. Um, alcoholics can have some, some trouble actually, actually sort of maintaining the right amount, right levels of these vitamins. Um, the, the actual reason why we need to consume this why this is important is because we do need to consume it on a daily basis because uh, it's a water soluble vitamin I haven't discussed this with you yet but there's lots of different types of vitamins there's A, B, C, D, E and K now A, D, E and K are all something known as fat soluble vitamins which means they can be stored under the skin in our adipose tissue now because this is a type of a vitamin B, this isn't actually a fat soluble vitamin, it's actually a, a form of water soluble vitamin, which means it obviously dissolves in water or has the ability to. Um, so we've got B and C left over from this list, and these are the water soluble ones. Okay, so you're probably thinking, well, what is the implications of having too much? Well, you can, well, there's not as much of a risk for this, but you need to consume quite a lot of it for this to happen. It can lead, excessive consumption can lead to swelling. Um, so I'll write swelling. I'm not going to go into too much detail with where the swelling is because it's pretty much all around your body. It can occur anywhere. It usually starts at the extremities, so like near your feet, around your legs, and then it might work its way up to your chest even, or just in, in some sort of more medial um, medial portion of your body, if you like. Um, obviously, in extreme cases, it can lead to death, but this is pretty much the same for anything. If you have extreme amounts of something, it can lead to death in certain people. It's very, very unlikely to you though, so, so don't worry about eating this vitamin at all. Um, it, like, despite not needing very much, you need to eat an awful lot to actually to actually get a problem from having too much. Um, okay, so so what does this actually do? Well, I haven't really said much about what it does. I've said what one of the implications of having too much or a surplus of it is. But I haven't said sort of what what deficiency can cause. So so deficiency, as usual, can lead to fatigue. Uh, which is tiredness, so if you don't have enough of something, generally common sense tells us that this can lead to tiredness. Um, it can lead to irritability and depression as well. Um, so write depression there. And irritability is, is again, it's a symptom that's very similar to, um, to, to, the, actual, to the actual vitamin A that we studied earlier. Um, so so I, I keep on saying we studied this earlier, you may not have seen my previous video, in my last video, if you go back to it, it's on it's on vitamin A or retinol, um, well, where there's certain similarities between this vitamin and retinol. Obviously, vitamin A, as I've just said here, I didn't say this in my first video, so pay close attention. Vitamin A is a form of fat soluble. So if you've seen my last video, you'll know that you don't need to, to actually consume vitamin A um, that often. Uh, it actually goes into more more detail with what vitamin A is. Obviously, there's similar things to this, but it doesn't say about the different forms of vitamins. Okay, so you've got fat soluble and water soluble vitamins. Okay, so um, uh, like, like what is this actually required for? So we've got a few symptoms of not having it, of not having enough, and having a surplus of it. So we actually need to know what this is actually used for. So it's used for healthy skin. It's also used for uh, hair. So healthy hair. Um, and it's also used for eyes and liver. 
Now, there's a lot, a lot of different functions that happen in the liver. If you're interested in that, I'll probably make another video on it. I have made videos in the past, but anyway. So it's used for healthy skin, hair, eyes and liver. I'll probably write you down some of the actual requirements. So men need 1.2 micrograms, so mcg. Um, if it was just mg, it'd be milligrams. Milli and micro are different because micros, um, every microgram is 1 times 10 to the minus 6 of a gram. So it's a lot smaller than a gram, whereas a milligram will only be 1 times 10 to the 1 times 10 to the minus 3 of a gram. Um, like you're probably thinking, well, 1 times 10 to the minus 6. You know that's right because it means that you actually move the decimal point 6 places to the left, so it's a lot smaller than the gram. Uh, this is actually, um, look, let's put it in layman's terms, it's a, it's a thousand thousand times smaller than the gram, or a million, as we like to know it. Um, okay, so that's sort of how much men could sh should consume. Uh, women, again, it's different if you're breastfeeding, you might need a bit more than this, but um, you normally need, as, as a woman, around 1.1 grams, micrograms. This is only a rough estimate, it's not exact, so don't, if you find on a website that it might be 1 gram or something, don't have a go at me because it does vary, and there's certain websites say one thing, certain say another, so. So it, it does vary, but the recommended daily allowance is around around one microgram, which is which is relevant because this is hugely less than the recommended daily allowance of um, of vitamin A or retinol, which which is around sort of um, I think it's around 900 grams. I said in my last video, um, yeah, 900 around 900 grams. So it's, so it's anywhere like 700 micrograms to around 900 micrograms. Okay, so that's pretty much all I wanted to say about this particular vitamin. Um, I may do another video on the structure of it, but that's primarily what I want to say. So, thanks for watching, and see you in the next video. Goodbye.